Raw is a coming-of-age body horror film about a young vegetarian going to veterinary school. She not only must learn the ropes of independence and social structure around her, but she also battles it all with a cannibalistic craving that just so happens to be genetic. Although the film is absolutely disgusting in many ways, the true horror of this film is the hazing and college culture within the story. Lead character Justine is a young virgin and vegetarian who seeks nothing more than to fit in. She begins a journey of self-discovery. She not only has to keep up within the school, where she must socially earn her rights to be a student, but she also must curb her craving for human flesh. This film presents us with the terrifying truth of discovering oneself within a forceful environment, where finding a sense of independence is difficult when everything you do and who you are is being examined, whether by peers or family. We are going to take a deep dive and analyze Raw under the scope of French poetic realism ideas, camp, as it pertains to the veterinary school, and naked life, as the structures within the school affect our main character, Justine. We are looking past the gruesome visuals of the film and reading the animalistic and cannibal nature metaphorically, and how outside of consuming human flesh, our characters also socially devour one another, ultimately altering their lives. Our film opens with a coddled Justine, eating with her parents who are also vegetarians. Justine finds a piece of meat in her food, causing her mother to report it to the restaurant manager, creating a scene. Justine is a quiet yet curious character. We are introduced to her in a way that is immature. She lives in a bubble with her parents and has no idea of the outside world. Her parents have been able to protect her from the terrors of the world and even shield her from herself until now. Justine has enrolled in a veterinary school where her older sister already attends. Outside from transitioning to living outside of home for the first time, this school has some particularly strange traditions. Upon her first night, Justine's room is raided by masked students who destroy her room, throw her mattress out the window, rally all the new students like cattle, only to make them crawl on their hands and knees from the dorms to an underground party. And this is just the first night. We are thrown into the aggressive environment fast, and in this short amount of time, we see the implications of camp within the film. The older students of this veterinary school hold a large capacity of power over the freshmen. With their usage of violence, fear-mongering, and humiliation, there is no escape from these trials. Justine is just another informant, nothing important to them, a comrade, a rookie, a toy soldier to play with. These tactics are disguised as initiations, tests that determine worth within the school. These long-held traditions that claim to create better veterinarian doctors. After this wild night of torture and fun, Justine stands with her class for a photo, where pig's blood is dumped all over them. It is here we see Justine smile for the first time a hopeful look that is questioned immediately after. Once more, the students covered in blood are all lined up and forced to eat a raw rabbit kidney and wash it down with some type of alcohol. This set is the pure definition of camp. Not only are all students seen as informants, expected and forced to line up and pay their dues, they will see great misfortune if they attempt to defy the traditions. Justine, when offered the kidney, states her dietary restriction and is quickly labeled a veggie. She attempts to lean on her sister Alexia, who is also a vegetarian, but to Justine's shock, she no longer is, and forces the kidney into Justine's mouth, telling her she will be ridiculed for the rest of her time at the school if she does not eat it. This is Justine's turning point, as the shocking taste of meat unlocks something with her, within her. She begins to look at the animals used in lectures differently, steals meat from the cafeteria, and suddenly develops a hive-like rash all over her body. A symptom of eating meat, or lack of, is still a debate, but either way, it is her sickness we once more receive confirmation of the veterinary school's reputation and even more support of its camp idolization. Justine sees the school nurse about her rash, where she's given a cream and a not-so-encouraging pep talk from the nurse. She tells her a story about another student who was not skinny, to their standards, 
and the interns around other facilities in the school emotionally and mentally devoured her, told her they could not treat her because of her weight. Justine finds this information to be upsetting and of zero help to her own experience of torture and humiliation, but she continues on. Any sensible person would maybe just leave, but in many ways, Justine can't, so she endures the buffet that is made of her. This leads us into the compulsory. Naked life in poetic realism is metaphorically exactly what it sounds like, a unedited view of life. There is a tendency to shield people from the truth and even hide it altogether. For Ra, we have to watch Justine come to the realization that this life of hers is altering because of the abuse of power from the tenured students. Their fear tactics are working in a sense that it is bringing out the true Justine, and a hungry one at that. It is not even close to ironic that we have a story based within a vet school where animals are central, but our characters are seen as animals as well. Our cannibal characters are often seen hunched over like an animal. Students playing soccer on campus suddenly look like a pack of wolves with the sportsman aggression. And the animalization of all the violent raids and raunchy parties is uncanny. But this animalization is being fought by Justine, who does not want to be a cannibal, but like a wild animal, lacks control. It's not until she discovers the truth of her sister being a cannibal, who causes deadly car crashes to feed her appetite, that Justine is in complete shock of this life. She went from being taken care of, to eating raw chicken, and shortly after her own sister's finger, after it was cut off in a freak accident. Justine not only is often seen naked in this film, during the dorm raids, showing her rash, or washing off paint, Justine is embodied naked life because of the forced exposure she has endured while in school. The true fate of this film is naked life, a fact that is not sugar-coated, that is proven in our final moments of the film. After Sister Alexia has let her cravings get the best of her and ends up in jail, it is back at home in her bubble that Justine comes to see her family's naked life. Her father explains that everything will be okay and that nothing is her fault or her sister's. He tells her the story of how he met their mother and that she changed, changed him, and changed herself for the better. He unbuttons his shirt to reveal a multitude of scarring that resemble bite marks. He tells her that she too will learn to live, just as her mother, because the craving will always be there. Shocked to the core, Justine lets out her tears and fear and shame, as she was bred a monster, likely to never have a normal life. It is here we can now understand Justine's own home as a camp that has shaped and altered her life in a less traumatic style, but still with heavy amounts of impact.